I'm going to Hello, and welcome to another commentated to Infinity, the game we'll Battle Report. In this game, the, we are following the continued the adventures of Kyle the Bakunin like player. For like those who haven't seen it, there is a Contus Cemento vs. Bakunin Battle Report so up on this I'm channel immediately go. preceding Yolo. this one. And this is the second round in the same go. event. Uh, in this game, uh, Kyle, who is a local from Canberra, where I live, um, is continuing on into round two of the event, and he is playing Kevin from Loss of Lieutenant fame from Melbourne. So the matchup is is Bakunin versus Rama Task Force, and they are playing a custom mission called Seize and Vaccinate. Seize and Vaccinate is kind of a combination between supplies and unmasking. There are three vaccination caches across the middle of the board, which can be opened um, to cre you know, create a supply box or a vaccine box in the same way that a supply crate would open up into a supply box um, in supplies. Um, but then a model that is holding um, a vaccination box can then move into base contact with one of the enemy HVTs, of which there are three, and make a roll to vaccinate them. Um, that scores two points. Uh, there are a maximum of on, on two points for each enemy HVT vaccinated, one point for each vaccination box held by your troops at the end of the game, and one point for doing one classified. And we'll follow through as, they, uh, as the players move through and play the game. Now, Kyle won the roll and he chose to go first, uh, and so Ben obviously picked deployment. By the way, things are already in motion, players are moving around, um, but I will run you through what has happened so far. <laughs> so, um, for deployment, uh, across the midfield, there's one, H one of Kyle's HVTs here, a camouflage marker, there's another camouflage marker inside the building, another HVT here, and then another HVT here, which I think is excellently positioned, and another camouflage marker here, which is a little in the open, but this table is open um, by my standards, so this is sort of reasonable, a pretty solid um, Pretty solid positions for these things. Uh, Kyle has deployed, and by the way, if you've seen the previous battle report, this is the same list. Kyle is running his Bakunin list with a lizard again. Uh, he's basically, I think it's a good fit for this mission, but he is trying to just use it in as many lists, as, as many games as he can to get a feel for it and really master it, which is cool. Um, so here we have the Avicenna and Riot Girl Spitfire duo, which performed quite well last game. Uh, the War Correspondent, standing this time, not prone, because there are not the same level of uh, threats on this other table. Um, another Morlock here. Both Morlocks, by the way, EMCCWs um, and smoke grenades, uh, have rolled total immunity and dogged, which is extremely tasty. Uh, there are a series of transductor zones. The lizard has reserve dropped down here. Um, uh, not in cover, but that's boards. just because there was only so many places that he could put it. I think he wants to be uh, aggressive with it on the first turn, or potentially use its um, irregular order to move into cover. Uh, I don't think he's meant to deploy it. No, I don't believe he's deployed it um, facing anything. Um, so, you know, it's relatively conservative. Uh, and then the core link is down over here. Right, girl standing, everything else prone. The paramedic is back here. Now, there is kind of a note here. The, the weak point, I think, of this deployment, which you'll already be able to see from this angle, is this moderator combi is visible from quite a long way across the table. Um, now, this board I would describe as pretty vicious in, in their deployment zones. There was only so much that could be done. Um, but this is... Uh, so, yeah, this is this moderator is is may not, oh, sorry, this moderator mother may not be long for this world. So I hope it's not Kyle's lieutenant. Um, over here we have Kevin playing Rama Task Force, and this is a pretty cool list. Um, so we've got a Ghulam core with a Ghulam missile launcher, a standing ARO piece, uh, a Doctor, a Nafatun, another Nafatun. One of these is probably the lieutenant, uh, and then Yara Haddad. Uh, I don't believe this is strategic deployment, Yara Haddad, because she can't be in Rama Task Force. Um, we have a Harissa of Mukhtar, not using their forward deployment here because Kev is going second, and it's the Red Fury, the Hacker, and the Doctor. So this is an expensive but extremely cool um, Harris. This is this is very elite. It can heal itself as it moves out of no wooden cap. Um, it's strong, it's tough. It doesn't have capacity to really punch through armor, but it does have a Hacker. Uh, we've got three flash pulse bots, no engineer to my knowledge, and then Carmen Johns, who's rolled up plus one armor, which is fine. Um, armor two is okay, and Batard. Kev's HVTs are here, here, and here, also very well positioned, this one in particular. Oh, so here, here, and here. Ah, here we go, and then he's got a Nahab. 
That was killer hacker. Now, if Kyle has a KHD, okay. which I don't believe he does, hanging out under these camouflage markers, this Nahab might girls. be in some trouble. But if not, it's uh, it's yeah, very yeah, safely positioned. Um, now, the uh, lizard was obviously Kyle's reserve drop. Um, Kev made an extremely cheeky, but I think really good play. He rolled an infiltration roll. Uh, he needed a nine. He was not placing a model on the board, but I can tell you that what he was doing was attempting to deploy a Tuareg hacker, probably here. And, or maybe uh, here, three uh, or maybe here. Here prone, there. I think, would probably be the best in zone control of control of the lizard. Um, Dangerous, yeah, because oh, he couldn't be sure that there wasn't a KHD right under one of these, the but super cool. Um, however, it failed at roll of 20, cool. and so it's just Aeros. deployed prone down here, nothing, which, you know, it might do something. Now we're in the first turn, and the Morlocks have begun moving out. Um, just as a little bit of a, um, I'm not going to say critique of Kev's deployment, because I think it's fine. Um, but right, obviously we're seeing the, the Mukhtar not able to make full use of and their the forward deployment. If he'd wanted to do that, they could leader. maybe have been placed up here, uh, or sort of like on prone on this up, rooftop, so but I think he's made the right call here. here. This is, these are, so the, um, we'll say, barely, barely game, playable deployments. So they are playable, right? There are places to hide, like this is, you know, you can put some stuff back here. Um, and for a, for a 15 trooper army, right, you can probably just about get by. But there are some vicious lines into these deployment zones and there is not a lot of places to hide. My personal preference when I'm when I am playing Infinity, I mean I will usually go first because um, nobody lets me go second, <laughs> but um, if I get the chance I will try and go first um, because it's a good way of, of uh, you, you know, you, you want to learn. You want to learn to play aggressively, because the game probably favours going second in scenarios a fair bit now that we've reached state of meta equilibrium. I'll talk more about that later, perhaps. Um, but when I'm setting up tables, I kind of just like make make make, make at least one deployment zone comfortable. Neither of these deployment zones are comfortable. Um, they're savage. This one's a little better, and so I get why Kev has picked it. But like, Jesus Christ, this is a very open board. Uh, nevertheless, Next players have made a good go of it. I think they've Sinos. both taken uh, a fairly solid approach to pr protecting dead DZs kind of initially. Uh, um, and I think whoever whoever is going first, the scenario is going to do a lot in terms of making this playable. Perhaps. And let's get on to what's happening. So obviously we've got Morlock has moved forward. This Morlock is safe. It's dropped down some smoke. Um, and then moved up behind it. So it, yep. its impetuous order carried it from here to here, and it laid smoke, um, and it's dropped that smoke so that it can get past this missile launcher here, and then is a very well-placed smoke grenade. So we might see an assassination run by the, or a kill run by this Morlock. We probably won't, because Kev has docked orders from Group 2, I believe. Um, the other Morlock has declined to yeet forward. Now, it's got a decent chance of surviving the missile launcher, because it is total immune, but it's only total immune and dogged, um, and you don't want to waste these things, so fair enough. Uh, now, what has happened so is um, the remainder of the uh, orders from this first combat group have been spent moving Avicenna and the Riot go forward. Um, uh, uh, so the first face-to-face -face roll has occurred, and I can actually see that um, down here, uh, where the missile launcher has engaged the... Um, so what it's what been able to do is move up the shadow of this building to this point here to see the missile launcher. This fight is probably about 20, 21 inches. Um, and if we pull open the chat log there, we can actually see uh, he's rolled a crit and a 12. Um, and poor, uh, poor, the um, poor missile launcher has gone down. Now there is a doctor behind her, but that's one face-to-face -face roll, and the uh, the link of her watch is, is out. Um, and basically now the riot girl is in amongst the pigeons because uh, these Fanus remotes have been placed on picket duty. Now I reckon they're probably going to be in group two. Um, we'll see that. I don't have a copy of Kev's list, um, but if I was if I was going to put money on it, I'd say these remotes would be in group two, and their job is to die. But they will die hard because this is an MSV-1 BS-13 uh, troop. She has a, a very favourable face-to-face roll and if she gets stunned there is a Whip-15 Doctor right behind her to fix that. So uh, now I'm not sure if Kyle will remember that. He might. We'll see. Um, that might go against a uh, reasonable, um, <laughs> reasonable uh, interference if I was to if I was to jump in and mention that. But I don't think it particularly matters. I suspect that she has killed both of these Fenus remotes if I was just watching that last face-to-face roll. Or at least one of them. So right. yeah, some uh, more gunfighting. Um, I have the players down town quite low so that I can I can talk. But uh, yeah, a volley of shots and yeah, okay. Uh, so we've got unconscious on two remotes. Now Kyle does not need to kill these because there is no engineer, um, and I believe he's seen fifteen 
troops now. Well, it's so pretty close. Let's do a quick count. 5 plus numbers. 3 okay. is 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, I'm going to activate the team. There could be one unseen. There's nothing um, that I can see. I'm going to act is this a five-man link? One, two, three, four, five, the skill. She can vault over six. No, okay, so he's seen He's seen 15 troops. Oh, so we know there's no engineer. Yeah, there's no yeah, need to, to double-tap these the, things. Yeah, 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 um, so this is a coup, the, basically. The, this this school and missile launcher to is to probably here. probably going to be back up inside a couple of orders. But three kills... To that, in the first turn, the Nahab, with a right or missile launcher, oh, it's pretty okay. Jet, now it has taken, it has taken all board. of that. Fine. Like to, to actually accomplish it, Kyle is going to get to the. Kyle's going to get to the objective, and let's see what he does. This is interesting. So the the way that she's moving forward suggests that there's. Uh, there's an aggressive aggressive play that he has in mind. We're probably going to see a dodge from the Nahab. Yep, fair enough. Um, I am keen to see what Kyle does here. Avicenna obviously wants to live and probably get back to safety. I don't think she has enough orders. So specifically, I don't think she has enough orders to crack the box, which she does on two dice 18s um, in this scenario, and do a vaccination with only two orders left after this, because I assume this is the lizard. Um, so Kyle only rolling one dice there, but that's okay. Uh, so in his shoes, I would be pulling back after this. This is a really good attack, by the way. This this was probably the riskiest. He he had the option to move the lizard around, but it would have required some finagling because the missile launcher would splash the transductors on and the Morlock. Now he could get the Morlock out of the way by spinning it to regular order and moving it around this way. He could do the same with the transductors on, but that would be two orders just to have a face-to-face -face roll with the lizard. By moving up the riot girl first, he has actually a better engagement because he's engaging the ghoulam inside 24 um, without a meaningful disadvantage, right? He's put a minus three on both of his opponent's rolls by changing the range bands, and what he's suffered in exchange for that is, yes, the Riot Girl is obviously a less durable model, um, but she's still 4 dice 13s compared to 4 dice 14s on the Lizard, and at damage 15 on her Spitfire, because Riot Girls are sweet, um, almost as likely to score the kill. Uh, so this was a this was a good this was a good move. Um, while Kyle's figuring out what he's doing and they're making some moves, by the way, I just want to sort of pause and talk about this. This is awesome. This this duo is something Kyle has been using for a while. I've played against it several times locally, and it's a it is a real um, like demonstrator of duos in N4. This is not something I would ever really have thought, but coming into N4, very beginning of N4, I would not seriously have considered this. Um, but in the edition as it is, I ooh, he's going for the he's going for the vaccination. That is. That is now, bold, so given that there are plenty of offensive turn. pieces left um, in... Uh, yeah, alright, I, I wouldn't do this, Kyle, but, <laughs> but fair enough. Um, uh, I would be pulling uh, back. I would be pulling back around to, like, arrows? here. Yeah, um, the Mukhtar seem is across here. Oh, you know, fat cop. So anyway... Yeah. All right. Um, actually, can I change my mind? If that's yeah. Right? Okay. He might be taking that back. So the yeah, yeah. He's just realised that he'd have to find a linked Red Fury before he even does anything. And Avicenna, I want to say, is not shock immune. Uh, she has bio immunity, but that's not shock immunity in this edition. Um, is he going to pull back? No. He's going to he's going to have the fight. So this this we'll get back to the duo thing in a second. This I think is probably too bold with literally one order left after this. Like he can technically get there. Okay, all right. Mm. He's going to take the fight and then just like move into cover and be a pain. That I think this is a mis yeah, I think this is a mistake. I think this duo, after opening the box, should have pulled back to around here. Come in under right. Once the lizard, once once this is all done, the lizard can get to here and be a pretty savage Overwatch. Um, he's in a good position. The riot girl herself is watching the approach. This this is safe, right? This is nice and safe. Safe. And then it lets, on second turn, push forward, take some names, and score all of those points for vaccinations. This aggression, um, it's... I like it in the sense that it sends a message, uh, and over many games against players, being aggressive like this will actually pay dividends, in the sense that... Um, he's making some dodge rolls there, but I don't know if he'll want to do anything with them. Is he going to stand? 
No, he's just changing his facing. He might stand up. That's fucking bold, given that this this lizard is still alive. Um, yeah, being aggressive like this over a pattern of games is a good way of like teaching players to respect the amount of bullshit you might pull. But in a tournament, I would be here specifically. I would be inclined to be just a little more a little more conservative. Anyway, duos. Um, so this is something that really has kind of only come up as we've played more and more and more games of N4. Um, and duos actually over Harissa's in some cases. Now, that sort of defies what you would call conventional wisdom, particularly conventional wisdom that we imported from the previous edition. But in the previous edition, we had more troops on the board and we didn't attach the same value to just being a trooper. Um, we attach value to being a body. Uh, that's why you would see like 17, 18, 20, 21 trooper armies in N3. Um, but in, in N4, the proportional value of just being one of your troops is higher. Uh, and that, that means that the problem, the weakness of links, right? The weakness of links is that when you move forward, you expose more things to risk. Right, core links. Uh, apart like from this case, this being TTS distance, and moving core links is a total fucking embuggerance. Um, and moving links is just a pain. Uh, uh, moving links, uh, particularly moving links into the midfield, uh, exposes uh, them to so all of the same model risk model that model moving model. any model into the midfield does. And links, links will usually have a weak link. Um, <laughs> there will be a weakest or most vulnerable model as you move more troops into the midfield. The available defensive terrain becomes oh, okay. more and more. Um, Monopolized. You have fewer, like trying to fit five troops inside approximately the same space as three means that you'll have fewer of them in optimal defensive positioning. Uh, and similarly, moving two means, uh, moving three rather than two means that you'll only have so much defensive positioning. So this, this as a, an adaptation, this is the bare minimum amount of kill and specialist uh, that you can put into Sure. I, I should have measured that now. Like, this is still like, prone, surely. Like, um, just, this is the bare minimum, like, kill and specialist. So the, the um, optimal quantity of kill and specialist for the bare minimum number of troops moving up the board. There's a zero here, by the way, moving. It's got EM uh, minus into the deployable repeater. This, there's still a prone marker here. I'm sure he's not. Don't take your surprise shock, because I'm still in a four-man link. Doing anything oh, with yeah. that, right? Well, this must be standing. Right. So this on 11s, plus you for range, minus you for mimetism. Did he discover? Right, so I'll be hitting you on 11s, through on 11s, because you'll be in cover, and, um, the and that's fuck? it, in a good range. So. Well, Oof, okay. One and a 19, we'll get back so to this. Kind of zero hit at the this hit must not be prone. Ball. The prone marker no uh, longer applies. Yeah, you can. Uh, yes. Okay, this Nafaton's about to get shot twice by a zero. Ooh, Nafaton, don't die! Uh, Nafaton. And it's unconscious. Okay, so now the assu I assume here that the, the Nafatun stood, right, it made a dodge in response to Avacyana moving to catch it inside flamethrower range. Given that there is a lizard that still has a tactical awareness order, I have no fucking idea what he was doing there, but possibly both players have forgotten about that, or Kyle really wants to do something different. Anyway, so this Joe, this is a really good specialist, a quite good fighting piece, a doctor who can repair the fighting pace and nothing else. Um, there is no, there are, and they're both survivable. Um, Avicenna is not perfect, but she is BTS three bioimmunity, no wounding cap. Um, uh, both of these models, uh, oh, six inches, I think he's just, anyway. Um, both of these models can move into the midfield, and yeah, okay, sure, you are losing the burst bonus, specifically the Riot Girl is only going to be burst five, burst four, not burst five, um, but the benefit there is, firstly, you are freeing up a troop slot, which you can use to do something else, and secondly, you are not, ex this is, a, this is a, a link, a duo that is going to be active, um, you are not exposing that third Trooper really to risk. A, um, yep, you're not going to be burst two and active, uh, but like, high, if something is jumping you well, while you're in the midfield, there's a good chance yeah, it's an yeah, apex predator and you're either in trouble or like looking for survival or like whatever, yeah, right? So this yeah, this I really like. I like this enough that even in Toha, I have started running. Now you can't actually run duos in Toha because a triad has to be formed with three troopers, but I have run. Toha lists that intentionally leave a troop behind, <laughs> um, so as to expose few things, fewer things to risk. Specifically, um, I find that the uh, that the um, 
Tech Whale Officer Lieutenant. I often want to be spending its two lieutenant orders. I like doing that. And I like running a duo of um, a Kriegel agent with Ferro Booster, which doesn't benefit from link bonuses anyway, and a Mukta. So you can you can form that up as a legal three-person triad and then just break it by spending a lieutenant order and you still have a duo left. Um, and for the same reasons, right? For this, like you have more, you have more moving parts. There are a lot of benefits to diversifying your forces like this. And this, like this duo, is part of what lets this list function because it means that he's got. You look at he's got a core link. I think there's only there's only one transductor zone in this list, right? So you look at how this list functions. It has a five-person link with no spares and a transductor zone. And uh, literally so every other element sorry, in the list is a curious, moving like, part, right? It's a Morlock, or it's a Lizard, or it's a Duo, like here, um, or it's a Zero she under a Camouflage Marker. All thing. things that like, can operate independently, like, which well, is kind of like borrowing the advantage of being a Vanilla Faction. Vanilla okay, Factions do not have links, they do not have Force Multiplication, uh, yeah, but they have this option uh, to yeah. always choose to activate whichever troop is most efficient to activate in any given moment. They aren't constrained by having to so shackle to troops together. This is Actually, borrowing some of that strength while that's still that's having a five-person okay. linked riot girl. Anyway, the, uh, um, so this uh, this Riot Girl so is being uh, extremely, extremely uh, bold. So I can't help but wonder if Kyle has forgotten this irregular order belongs to the Lizard. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe this is the Lizard's regular order, but I'm pretty sure the Lizard is Route 1. Um, so this Mukdar is about to copper damage 15 hit. That's fine. He'll be okay. Um, just one hit, does it? Yeah, uh, Mukhtar is um, armor uh, armor one, but um, yeah, shrugs it. Probably going to stay standing. Um, yeah. Might drop prone. Could honestly drop prone, but might might uh, choose to stay standing. Um, so you'll be in cover the whole time. And there's going to be a couple of shots going into this nab. So this this right girl is being um, Jesus. This is bold. three. You hit me. Uh, well, so this will be armor piercing shot really into the riot yeah, girl. Um, at, yeah. Okay. So if this so if this I'll, goes, I'll I think honestly Kyle's so in a pretty good spot. Um, I think the matchup is reasonably serviceable. Uh, I think getting three kills on the first turn is very nice. Um, ooh, that was an emitter shot. Okie dokie. Um, right. I want to vaccinate the HVT, so I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a command token, convert my war cause order regular. Uh, huh. And, um, you just said convert the Walkers order. I was pretty and sure to, that the tag was in Group uh, 1. It's possible I'm misremembering the last uh, game, um, where he may have flipped the tag over at some point prone. during the game, so which is totally fair. To so to noting that this is this is spendable, I still think he's made kind of a mistake here. Right? You're not going after just one of these functionaries, you're going after all three of them. I don't hate getting points on the board early, but like, this Mukdar is still standing. Um, it's shock ammunition, she's not shock immune. Uh, I know she's going to roll, like, she's rolling something like two dice no, 21s here or something, if I remember the scenario correctly, but this is a lot of resources spent. Uh, okay, no worries. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and regulate the... Uh, yeah, the agency, please. this is... This, this play I disagree with. Right, she's about to get shot by the Nahab, she's about to get shot by the Mukta, probably. Yeah, don't like, I don't think she's prone. So... Um, the the kind of like the early games Sorry, Kyle made, he's he's frittering away just a little bit, and like the Nahab is very dangerous. Feasibly, the Nahab could have come up here, up here, down here, but like there's a riot girl. And one of the really significant things about this position, right, and maybe Kyle is not fully thinking about, he presently has a dominant, right? This is a, because the table is so open, this riot girl has all of this rooftop visible, this alleyway visible, this exit from the building visible, right, the windows are not passable, this rooftop visible, this alley, like, there is no way to approach the riot girl. Um, and all of the 24-inch range guns, that um, uh, all of the 24 inch range guns that uh, Kev has are like they're here and here, they're a long way back, they've just lost some orders. And the Lizard is in a position as well where it's going to be able to move, say, up to here and be a threat. Anyway. Um, so. Uh, a five, and HVT has been vaccinated, so like you know, fair enough. Um, the this is the vaccination box. Um, it stays on the board, uh, and there are two objective points on the table for Kyle. Fair enough. Um, the riot girl does need to be killed because um, she can reset out of isolated and mobilize on a one. 
Right, uh, so but yeah, there she goes. She probably. dies. So Avicenna. I I don't think trading Avicenna and getting the ice the right girl effectively killed was worth two objective points. But we'll see. I reckon just just make, be sensible. I'll just put it here. I reckon I would have enough move to do that. I was just being uh, sort of being rushed. Uh, and then okay. um, so lizard. Oh right, just briefly redeploying the lizard because Morlocks. apparently he didn't mean to put it there, uh, but he no? was just being rushed yeah. with his deployment. This Morlock... um, it might no, go no. into suppression. It might wait, do something wait, else. Uh, Morlocks so are just going to tidy really things up. So we'll we'll round out the turn for Kyle here uh, and then see how Kev um, see how Kev counterattacks. I think he's in the. And then... With this, with this, with the with the functional death of this duo and this uh, zero, this zero is as good as dead as well. It's not really in cover. Um, that the Nafatun, the zero kill on the Nafatun uh, was an interesting exchange. The fact that um, Kev is starting the turn with four casualties, um, meaning that he will have eleven orders to play with, plus the Impetuous, plus the NCO, um, is interesting. It might defang him slightly, but um, so I think I think every everything, literally everything in Kyle's turn. Up to the part where he got this duo killed <laughs> for two objective points, um, I think was fantastic. Um, if she rolls a one on her, uh, there's no engineer back here. If she rolls a one on her reset, um, things will things will look good for our <laughs> our hero. But I suspect that she's not going to. Now, one thing that is worth noting is that because she can roll a one on her resets, Kev might feel the need to kill her. I will be very interested to see if he does or doesn't. A five percent chance obviously is not high. It's a five percent chance, um, but she can potentially have many resets as the turn progresses, and like. 10 5 percent chances I can't see that doorway actually from here not an unreasonable likelihood that, that turns up so kev might feel the need to kill her we'll see anyway morlocks are tidying up um, Liz is just faffing around, very few orders left here. Um, we'll see what goes on. They're doing a little bit of just like checking to make sure everything works, a um, bit of line of fire checking, etc. Um, quite nice snappy play at the moment, actually. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons as well to run a duo is that it's much easier to move on TTS. Um, so we will, uh, we'll just pause up here and we'll see how Kev's first turn begins. So, Kev has just said the right girl's whip is 13, so I probably need to go and kill her. So I guess that answers that question. Now, one thing that is relevant to note, and this is kind of the tribulation of running custom missions. Um, Move out. Kyle did not realize that this vaccination pack was not consumed, and that all you needed to be doing was holding a vaccination pack in order to make the vaccination roll on uh, HVTs. So he thought that he was grabbing it, consuming it, um, and getting the points on the table, when in fact he was really just getting himself killed to deliver it to... Uh, to Kev. So that kind of sucks. Now, um, I, as a bit of commentary, um, while the poor Riot Girl gets either blown out or rolls a one to reset. Um, so just the right girl, that's fine. She's standing up, so. Uh, oh, yeah, walking through the zero there as well. We'll see what he does. I think he's going to just try and see the right girl first. Uh, yep, there we go. So, um, <laughs> before, before Sydney infected the entire Australian continent with. Nick fucking COVID-19 um, oh, uh, by refusing okay, to um, quarantine the bloody rich beach people um, when they got the sneeze. Um, not bitter about that at all. Uh, we were running in-person events. Um, as a bit of a commentary, uh, ITS-12 is really not any different to ITS-11, which meant that everyone is very, very familiar with it. Uh, now, obviously, the, there has been an entire edition change since ITS-11 and ITS-12, and I actually totally understand not wanting to both radically change ITS and radically change, or even partially change the game, right? You want, in terms, in terms of game design, um, etc. Uh, okay, so the right girl just reset. That's very cool. Um, now, she's just copped three hits, so she might die, but uh, she's cleared the... Okay, this is going to get spicy. We have a resetted Riot Girl if she survives those attacks. Um, three saves. She's going to be looking for probably eights to pass here. Um, let's see how she does. So, what's damage? 13? Yeah, so you need sevens. Or eights, sorry. Eights. How does she go? I'm interested. Pass, fail, pass. So, she is alive. Uh, wounded. 
you but not. <laughs> okay, now this is probably an easy kill, but uh, these troopers are exposed. Um, we will see what she does. She might, she'll almost certainly shoot. That's, uh, that's cool. She can also guts prone and open up line of sight to this zero. That's a freak event, man. So, um, okay. Kyle there is just saying that was a bit of a freak event. Yes, but like a 5% chance is actually not that low. Um, it really, it's not. Like 1 in 20 occurrences, statistically speaking, are not even remotely unlikely. They happen about 1 in 20 times. Uh, and across multiple orders, right? Like that's why Kev said he had to make this kill. Uh, and so he's put a wound on her at least, right? Bang on. Anyway. Um... ITS-11 is not materially different to ITS-12. Uh, obviously, we have had a, a, a flux of novelty, um, novelty being kind of a desirable quality in a game, right? Like, novelty is nice. You don't want things to be stagnant. Uh, they get boring. Um, an addition change is novel. Uh, it produces novelty. But um, ITS is not particularly different. Uh, having had a bunch of events under our belt, I have gotten into the habit locally of running usually like one variant mission per event. Um, but kind of a lesson that I have learned is don't make them complicated. Uh, pretty much every variant mission I have run has been either a mashup of two existing um uh, two existing missions that people already know about, um, or like, right, so that they're not having to learn anything new, or it's been a a one obvious variation on an old mission or a modernization of an old mission. For example, Transmission Matrix. You cannot play Transmission Matrix as it existed in ITS previous ITS editions in N4. It's busted as hell, but you can do something like it. Um, and so the the big thing is players. Uh, particularly for like one-off missions, um, the players will play maybe a little bit leading up to an event, and then at the event, and then maybe not that much, but afterwards, um, you have to make them really playable and simple and like not complicated, because it sucks in an event, right? Even a really casual one, it sucks in an event to misread a scenario and make terrible decisions because of it. And Kyle has had thought, like, kind of like not unreasonably, just speed reading the scenario a little bit, right? We're all busy, we've got lives, we've got jobs, um, that this vaccination pack went away after use. And it doesn't. You've got tons now, of dice, though, if you'd looked you at how the points are scored, uh, I kind of think it was a bit silly to think that they might go away, because there are points for holding vaccination packs at the end of the game. If they go away, you could not score those. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is just a bit of a case in, like, hey, make scenarios simple as possible. Now, Season Vaccinate, um, as a scenario, uh, apart from being extremely on the nose, it's not hugely complicated, right? It is kind of, it's unmasking plus... Um, or elements of unmasking plus elements of supplies. I think it's quite well done, actually. Um, but yeah, that was a, an easy thing to miss um, and a bit of a shame. Now, in terms of what is playing out here, the the good thing for um, the good thing for Kyle is that. Well, Kev has been moving these for so long now that I don't think he knows what he wants to do. Um, <laughs> So like, two, but your fucking mind up. Right, um, they've moved back here, here oh, over here, around here, here. Yeah, back here, right, back um, here. I don't think Kyle ever made a guts roll, roll for the, uh, okay, uh, the case, riot girl. He should have done that, but that's okay. I will shoot the doctor. Um, like so, uh, yeah. With my, okay. Um, so this is, if we look at, this is Kev's order pull. Um... One order to move forward, one order to take the shot. So this is only the second order. After this, he is going to have six orders on this team. That's not a ton. Um, and like, Carmen kind of can't go anywhere because... Well, she can. Carmen, Carmen, once all of this is dead, Carmen's going to be able to come around this way. But she's only got three orders. She's probably going to end up... This is not a good table for her. Actually, she might try and get into the building. She's 8-4, right? Not 8-6. She's on an Ariadne bike. Yeah. So, bit of a face-to-face -face face -to -face roll here. I think the Riot Girl has elected to shoot the Mukta Doctor. I... I would have face-to-faced -face this. Um, you want to just stay alive for as long as possible. Uh, it's worth remembering that this Mukta is wounded, I think. I'm sure I remember it being wounded. But maybe it was uh, inconclusive. Okay, so we've got an 11 as the best roll, um, but that's five hits into the right girl. And you needed what? So does that four hits or five hits? No, you're not in cover because I'm... 
Oh, like, yep. this line along this okay, yeah. sure. in front of you. So the Mukhtar is so probably going to blow out the right goal now, right, but I'm reckoning that took one more wound do, than uh, one more wound than one Now I'm not sure right, if they remember the, that this uh, so this Morlock has an ARO. Six, so um, I will I will just uh, we'll see what they do. Actually, I'm not super inclined to involve myself with that. It could dodge prone or dodge or something. It probably wants to get over here. Oh no, sorry, yeah, sixteen. You're right. Yep. So that's not a crit. On your Morlock. Uh, oh yeah, they haven't remembered Morlock Dodger, it's cool. So the Mukta Doctor's going to take a hit. Okay. I can see, so it'll be a 13. Um, 13, by the way, would have been really freaking good against this Mukta MSV. But that's not the right way to think about probability, right? Like, it's just... That would have been a crit is a, is a really easy way to get yourself give yourself a mental illness, to be perfectly frank. It'll just disappoint you if you think about things that would have been. So, this is interesting. So this zero, rather than try and do anything, has dropped an EM mine. Uh, which I respect and as a decision, right? Because it was dodging. pretty obvious when the so Mukta engaged that it was going to want to kill this right girl. Too, isn't it? So, um, yeah, that cop. I know how to play this game. Kyle is under dodging. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I'll take. Okay, I have just informed Kyle yeah. of his so own model's that abilities. Could have definitely split fire, but you know, dice. I just want to be sure. Yeah. So Kev's just talking now about how he he chose not to split fire, um, yeah. because so like this was too important, is, uh, and I kind of agree. Um, the the kill on the right girl and Abyssiana is a coup and a really good way to get back into the game for him. Press wrong buttons. Um, All right. So third order on the link team again. This is a challenging engagement. Uh, so now though. you've moved that Morlock out of the He's fire he's. This is kind of like, this is a microcosm of the Rama situation. Um, the the really notable weakness of Rama Task Force is that they their defensive game is limited to eating shit and dying. Um, <laughs> like, not to put too fine a point on it, right? Um, uh, okay, one second. Yeah. Um, the, the, sorry, I was just talking to the players very briefly. The... Rama defensive technique is to, is to have this fucking die, um, which is not ideal, right? So, and what I mean by that is that they um, they have no mind layers, they have functionally no midfield camouflage game, um, they have no ablative pieces except for Fenus remotes, um, and their link. Defensive, oh, yeah, he, like no, he, oh, their, their ARO pieces the, yeah, yeah. are Magari Bagard, which is the most expensive BS14, no special yeah, mods, no special anything. So, um, uh, oh, there you mods. Go. Cool, cool, cool. I think that Mukhtar is repairing herself. Um, cool. <laughs> I uh, rolled a 10. Um, this is cool, by the way. So just as a point, the um, the Muktas are 6-2. As they move forward, uh, if one of them is wounded, the Doctor can repair them and you give up very little movement. Um, so the Muktar... So just summarise what you just did, please. All I've done is just giving you the arrow to the Muktar MSV2, and I've just moved... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. So this the Muktar is moving. And the MSV2 is uh, Spitfire's link leader. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. This this zero is getting some value, but we'll see what goes on. Anyway, I'll let the players figure that one out. I'm not actually sure who the link leader is. I think it's the MSV2. Uh, oh, here we go. Yep, yeah, cool. So they're just carrying the wound with him. I expect that we will see in a subsequent order. I think that was time to dodge there, Kyle. I think you've got one mine down and that's fine. I know that you're likely to die, but make him work for it. Or at least, yeah, oh well. Um, I mean, I, you know, the mines do kind of close up this space. Yeah, I mean, the highest roll he rolled was a 9 there. You could potentially have dodged that. Anyway, um... You right. can't, like, the, you can put a Mega Reba, yeah, if you zero, pay for her, on ARO duty. Yeah, that is an extremely, right. extremely dead zero. Um, but well, like, we see what Kev's done here, right, where it's a Ghoulin Missile Launcher. A Ghoulin Missile Launcher is not a robust defensive pace. It's a BS-11 line infantry. Um, you can't put tougher things in that Ghoulin link. Uh, right, you can't put, a, uh, like, an ideal, an ideal thing would be something like um, the... Uh, Janissaries, the the no winning cap um, MSV1 Janissaries. That would be sweet. Um, you can't put that in a, in a core of line infantry. That has to go in a heavy core, right? Not a good ARO pace because it's expen too expensive um, in that module. Like Nafatun, 12, 12 points. Like everything is expensive. Ghulam, 11 points, right? 11 points as a light shotgun defensive tool. Not terrible, but it's not like what you want. So you end up in this situation with. Um, with with uh, 
I will Rama, where you're so literally your defensive you technique is to have uh, like yeah. three Fenus remotes uh, you who you expect the... to die on the first turn, the um, range like and or and. Oh, wait, like, that's um, in, in not bit. ideal. Um, that yeah. that oh, okay. imposes so, a cost. Yeah, no, um, you, won't, won't be hit by the you either yeah, have to just accept the fact that you're losing three models it's more than eight, so as part of your that's defense, that's right. Right. Um, right. and you, you can't like you can't even particularly null deploy right because uh, you like your troops are expensive okay, and no you don't want to take casualties I anywhere. Will, uh, um, it, traditionally, when you null like if you are null deploying with another faction, it's because your stuff is a combination of robust or expendable. And in Rama, nothing is robust and little is expendable. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Blah, 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 yeah, cool. Yep. Uh, we just saw the um, the Doctor heal itself, as I mentioned before. Um, so this is now a full health Mukta Harry's, which is very cool. Um, also, part of why uh, I think that the Riot Girl should have really face to face the Mukta Red Fury, um, just because. Uh, like the, the it's so easy for this link to heal itself. You want to just waste as many of his orders as you can. Um, she also realistically she could have dodged. Uh, like normally you would not do that, but in this case it would give her a sixteen, and you just want to waste as many orders from your opponent as you can. Um, it is what it is. Uh, if if Kyle only starts the turn down two orders, right? Like there's not. Not to that many orders left here in this more in this uh, team. Oh. If Kyle has um, to turn down two orders, he's not in a terrible Red place. The Lizard is still alive. Um, the Morlocks are still alive. Down two orders, sorry. Um, two zeros are still alive, and he is on the board. Um, and his ends, his uh, his HVTs are quite well positioned. Doctor's not link leader. It's the so we've we've seen we've seen two casualties, right? These two Fenus remotes died. The Ghoulam this Ghoulam died. That's not a terrible casualty set um, for the first turn, but it's still not ideal. Um, I'm going to regular dodge. Ah, yep, yep. cool. Just some dodge and stuff happening. And then this Nafatun uh, died as well to like eight inches of my other guy. Just make yeah, this play yeah. happen. Yeah, a guy oh, look at that! Like an artifact popping in. Um, so I think I think Kev is doing a really good job of handling this and playing around the limitations of the faction. And there are some benefits to the faction that make up for the limitations. Gulam, as far as light infantry links that really don't make use of heavy wild cards go, Gulam are amongst the best. Um, the the mere combination of a burst enhanced. Uh, uh, NCO, <laughs> wherever the <laughs> fuck it is, here, uh, NCO Ghulam, Smoke Grenade Launcher, and Yara Haddad, even just in a three-person link, which is what is left here if the Doctor stays behind, is a lovely combination. It's smoke and really good smoke shooting, all on a cheap platform. Um, the, this Ghulam NCO is one of the best line infantry troops in the entire game, and Yara Haddad is a very efficient, like a single wound, very efficient marksman shot. This is a this is a great combination. Um, Fenus are good. We'd lovely to have an engineer in here, but you can't have everything. Uh, Carmen Johns is tied for the best biker in the game. Um, and that's only because um, Zulekia Narazova is uh, like extremely strong. It, it's her or Zulekia Narazova, and frankly, as much as I love Zulekia, Carmen might be better. She's more expensive, but the high watermark that you get with Carmen is like really, really significant. Um, she does not have shock immunity, which actually astounds me, um, and is of the biggest disadvantage, but she has... Uh, Equally good, like, um, it's probably slightly worse shooting than Zalekia. Um, Zalekia does not have chain rifles, but she has flamethrowers, right? Light flamethrowers. She does not have a burst 3 heavy pistol, but she has a burst 4 breaker pistol, right? Probably slightly better for Zalekia. Um, and then uh, she has an explosive plus 1 burst CC, D, um, CCW, so like in that sense, better in melee. But if we look at Carmen Johns, and she has actual martial arts, Zalekia has none. She has booty, which is... Uh, Almost never bad, and sometimes incredibly high roll. Like, you can just have a plus one... You can just have a HMG on her sometimes. Like, it happens. Um, and then, of course, she has Batard, who is a sensor, and all of the benefits of peripheral, and like... Yeah. So just having... If I could take Carmen Johns in any vanilla faction, I would very strongly consider it. Um, in fact, I would. I would just I would just take her. She's incredible. So, like, there are benefits to playing Rama, but... And and Kev is playing Kev is playing both to those benefits and around the disadvantages. But just look at those unconscious markers everywhere. That's Rama. Um, so I like what I'm seeing here, and like he is holding his own. I think Kyle has made 
some um, very strong plays and a, like one one notable misplay based on a misunderstanding of the scenario. Um, yeah, and in retrospect, that like decision of Kyle to yeet Avicenna forward makes sense if it consumed the vaccine pack, right? Because if you use it up, you've permanently put runs on the board that your opponent can't recover from. But whereas if you'd hidden back here, you potentially, particularly if you've hidden back here, like next to one of your NC, um, your HVTs, um, I keep saying NCO, one of your HVTs, three other acronyms. Um, you know, there's potentially there's a swing that your opponent can make where they get up, you know, they get the get the Nahab up here under impersonation marker, and they come down and they kill and they vaccinate. I'm like, oh, that's terrible, okay. but yeah, oh well. Um, so Kev is just using the last of his orders here to pull this team back. So we look at how the status. I think. Let's move the hack this is probably just TTS being tricky to control. We look at how, and there'll be a couple of orders to spend on common. We look at how the status quo has settled out here. What has Kev used his turn to do? Um, he has used it to kill a riot girl, having killed Avicenna in the turn before. He's used it to kill a zero. Um, he's kind of like, this is going to be a little bit of a pain to deal with, but whatever. Um, and that's about it. Uh, he's pulling back to a safe position. Now, what do we feel about that? Um, if this table was any less of a parking lot, I would say this was the wrong play because um, you, Kev, I think is very, very slightly behind. He has taken four casualties. Kyle has taken three. Kyle's about to get, begin his turn, right? So the process can repeat and there is no order stripping this time. Um, I would say Kev is a little bit behind and wants to be aggressive to get back ahead. And one of the ways that you can do that is to like leave your troops in the midfield. It's never... Right, when you think about that, it's like you're exposing them to risk. I talked about that before. And this is a, this is an easy 100 points of troops. More than 100 points of troops, I think, that you're exposing to risk by leaving them in the midfield. But by leaving in the midfield, you don't have to spend all these orders next turn to move forward. And if you do that, then you potentially, with these seven orders that you've got, right, you next turn you can start in a more advantageous position and take more ground. You functionally, you stage them for action um, on your second turn. Now, it would be risky. He doesn't know what's under this camouflage marker. He doesn't know what's under this camouflage marker. The, the best place, by the way, would probably be on this rooftop. Um, I can't toggle the scenery, but there was uh, there was space up here. And Mukhtar are very, very good at jumping. They jump six inches, despite not having super jump. They could move like up to here, or up to here, or climb or something. Um, so you get it back three, as yeah, is, he's pulling back. Turn, this is basically oh, where they are. He's kind of, yeah, so they've got the doctor right. prone here. Sorry. I'm just gonna this is on the, a dangerous the position. The, link, um, the hacker the prone here and the, the red fury standing. And, and he is just here, moving the doctor inch to there up to there. I think this is going to be the last order to try and heal the missile launcher. I don't think this walk will ever had arrows. Now, if we look at what and she's back. Does not do it. Ooh. So that's fun. Oh, um, that was an 18. Uh, he may well reroll that. I would in his shoes. Yep. This is needing 17, so there's a very good chance on the reroll. Let's see if... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Now, if we look at this team, this team is very easy for Kyle to move. And can it get shots? Yep, it can get a missile shot. No, no, that's prone, so that's safe. So it can get a missile shot into this Mukta hacker from way downtown. And then it can get a missile shot into this Mukta doctor. It's going to have to fight the... Let's see if he relinks. So I, th I think the play for Kyle next turn... Noting that he's up on points, and depending on what his classified is... Oh, if you want to is to get the lizard up to oh, about yeah, here to, you'll need to at some point, the and have a shot with the Gula missile launcher, right? Yeah. Like, okay, this well, should be within we'll 24 we'll inches. So we'll do it anyway. It's close, but I'm pretty sure it's within 24. Fine, um, good that's good a good face-to-face -face roll. Six. Can you get a... Six. You can't get any Mukhtar shots on the way, but doing that will then let the Riot Girl move up. And she's only two dice, but... The Riot Girl has a very good chance of killing both of these Mukhtars. And if she does that... I think the game might be in the bag. 
for Kyle if he just keeps his cool. And he could pre feasibly do all of that in this turn, but we will see. So Kev is just moving moving up. He's yep. He's flipped the um, flipped the command token to ref. I think he's flipped the command token to reform this link. There's certainly a command token missing. Um, yeah, so again, we're back to five because there was a refill. The fact that this this Nefertun is dead does not stop this from being a five person link. Um, oh yeah, he's recamer for second combat group. He's recamouflaged the Twareg. Um, and then uh, Carmen, I guess she can't. And then yeah, Carmen's so going to do some stuff. To is it like? Can I stand in this box? Just the All right. So Kyle's here. beginning his second so turn. So if I'm prone and just here, having I a conversation fine. about what he's going to do. Uh, Mukhtar oh. will see me probably if I had a guy here. It, Mukhtar will see you through this gap. There's a lot of conversation yeah, about yeah, how he thinks this missile launcher, like it, for all that she's calling, cool. is a bit of a challenge. Kind of a bit, yeah. And I'm like, really is she really? I was prone here. Like seriously, just move this lizard okay. up to here. And then out to here, mm. and then go four it's dice, um, it's, it's four dice fourteens versus two dice elevens. There, so you yeah. have to kind of come it's not hard. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good face to face roll. Because um, there's, there's fuck all that can like challenge the lizard otherwise, right? Like the flash bosses are all prone. Um, you're not going to. So not going to see this Mukhtar, but you'd love to if you did. So this is, go, like, this is easy. This is so easily like, the, the play, solution, is to move this Lizard up to here and just have this kill. Uh, I get this, um, I and a, then do things with the rest of your army. But pick up we'll see. Box. Yeah, he's... So the, the conversation which you'll, you'll hear part of as I talk is um, basically how he scores points. Which is a very reasonable thing to actually think about. Like, how do you score points here? Um, the the play, if you were dead set on scoring points, would be to take this objective under cover of smoke. Uh, if one of these is... One of one or both of these will be a specialist. Um, take this vaccine and then vaccinate this NGO. Um, using smoke from... First turn, so there was a Morlock, but I think it might have died. Um, kind of good for you. Yeah. yeah, there must have been an engagement here. Okay, Alrighty, cool. So the I'm only Morlock left is this one. Um, so yeah, he's got a... Again, because this table is, is wide the fuck the, open, um, he has um, to put down some of these ARO pieces. The but like, dude, you have a tag. <laughs> You've taken out that zero you have a tag. This is a killer two, hacker. The, Kill everything. Oh, I've got one Morlock left. So that it's it's out. possible, yeah, I just got confirmation uh, one of the Morlocks is dead. So I must have gotten killed by the Mukhtar, because the burst five Mukhtar so is pretty dangerous beastie. One, um, two, three, I can't help but wonder five, if he's six, thought, oops, if he's thinking this this is a regular rather than one, three, a killer hacker Nahab. Five, um, and he can one. be forgiven for thinking that, because again, in Canberra uh, there are not a lot of regular, people who play Nahabs. I am a hack player and there are like one or two others. But I don't run this piece a huge amount. And others don't as well. So he might just have it in his mind that this is a hacker rather than a killer hacker. No, that's going to make it easier, harder for me. We'll see. And then group two. Doing the quick order count. My camouflage mark, which generates regular order. The transductors on is still alive. Yep, yeah, okay. And I've so. got a war there should be enough to uh, score some solid kills. My do, my play genuinely here token, would be to score some kills to try and lock Kev out of the game. Uh, right? Uh, order, uh, put this ghoul arm down with a shock round and then, and then put I, missiles into these two Mukhtar. And if you do that, might, you win. Basically, even, because nothing can challenge the riot girl, yes, and very few things uh, can challenge the lizard. No, um, no Yara Hadan under smoke absolutely can, but not kill it. Just force it back into cover. Short of very, very good dice. Um, mm. That would be my play. You know what? I'm tempted. When you are ahead, don't silly. lose your lead. Uh, uh, there's a bit of an argument when you are ahead, get further ahead. Um, that's actually not a bad mantra, to be perfectly yeah, honest. I'll, I'll, um, it's I'll difficult leave. to... In, in infinity, the, the tricky thing is to figure uh, out where you are ahead, <laughs> because you're often uh, making uh, traits. So, for example, uh, in the first, first turn, first, phase, Kyle traded here. resources, so right? He traded the lives of two troops, so ultimately three, um, for a combination uh, of attritional and scenario uh, advantage. He does have more points right now, but not a lot more points. Um, the uh, they are going to so he is ahead. He's only ahead lightly and in a couple of locations. Um, my inclination would be to get further ahead on attrition there. with the intention yeah, of having so the last turn be there. a really significant one. Um, we will see, though. He may have alternate there. plans. No um, oh, so, oh, yeah. We'll this... So... We said it was muddy windows. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, so, so it looks like a bit of discussion between the players there about how windows work. The players agreed before the game that they were using the we muddy windows uh, open doors. Okay, rule. Um, then I'm going to. 
Uh, second short skill, I'm going to walk over yeah. the potion. Um, so, how, for those who have played that, Muddy Windows is a variant uh, that I think is really good for yeah, buildings with really receive. big windows. Uh, control. Check down control. Um, yeah, where, like, like so, like this one, for example, nothing. this this would this map again. would be even more guy, open if move, these buildings uh, were C into or out of, but not through, which is a pretty yeah. common way of playing. Um, because you just that's you just see the entire building, um, the entire interior. Muddy right. windows is um, you cannot to, you can um, only see blocks. or be seen mm -hmm. through a window if you are in base contact with it. Aha! It's Brand uh, De Castro. Um, so how that works is, uh, if you are touching the window, you can see and be seen. If you're not touching the window, you cannot. Line of fire cannot be drawn to you. Um, you can still be affected by things. Line of um, line of sight can't be drawn to you. Line of fire still can, in the sense of like um, a temporary weapon or something. You're not immune to those. Um, but it's just a way of it's a way of having interestingly playable interior spaces where there are very large windows um, or very large like other openings. They're playing open doors, and I think that works because the you, if you can see through the doors but not the windows, you have oh, slightly more constrained but still state? open lines of fire. Anyway. Yes, um, with it, with it. Oh, okay. Well, I will unspend that order if that's all right with you. Yep. I'll rather have the vaccine and not be camouflaged. Good idea. Yep. And okay. So I'll, Bran I'll, I'll has grabbed the, um, the vaccine pack. I'm not sure what he's going to do with it. At least I've got a vaccine now. <laughs> At least I've um, got a vaccine now, says Carl. Not sure what he's going to do with it, but I'm sure there is a plan here, and I suspect... That's not yeah, okay, so these case, these I'm are orders that Bran solution. has spent. Uh, tag is gonna um, activate. Okay, the tag is activating, finally. And the tag is going to... <sighs> Should have been the first thing to go. It was just, out, it was just crappy range against this Fenos, but I'm... Ooh. Yeah, Carl, you're killing me here. Move to behind Good this blue range. building. So I'm gonna have to, um, move I'll ask him about it afterwards. Um, so he only has so many orders. Yeah, there we go. This is the right way to do it. Now, he really, really should have done this. To here. Um... Like as the first thing, I think in the in the turn, because it opens up so many other things. It, it sort of the success. This if like if this goes catastrophically wrong, you need to change your entire like do this first because if it goes catastrophically wrong, you have to change your entire plan. Let's just drop him. He's under the bridge. So like there. You have to change your yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of finagling around. You can turn these things off. Um, if this goes catastrophically yeah. wrong, your whole chapter, your plan has to change. If this goes right, then you can proceed. Um, that's the perfect kind of thing to just do first to see what happens. Um, you don't benefit from concealing your intent from your opponent during your turn that much in Infinity. It's not nothing, but it's, it's not super significant. And this is this is a move that opens up the rest of the play of the game. Now, you do need to be careful because, uh, like, you have to think about the exfiltration. Of this okay. lizard because this Nahab will kill it in melee. Clear short skill move. Uh, I do get to this Nahab so has, I don't think it has decharges, but it has an so extremely the, dangerous viral CCW. So the first thing it sees, I dare say the Mukhtar. Yeah, and to move back a bit more. Move back to not see the yeah. missile launch. So, so, bit of face to face. Okay. And this, yeah, this this really should have been. Right. I want to see, okay, I'm looking at you. Oh, I'm just trying to move down here so we can get line of fire. Uh, well, right, let's just have a look. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, sorry. I'm, um, my bad. I he says it sees the Mukta, but I'm I'm not convinced. So do you want to do you want to sli slice the pie on the Fanus and then do the Mukta? Slice on the, let's, let's slice on the pie on the Fanus, please. please. Ah, this Fanus has stood up. Okay, um, right. Yeah, that's, looks good to me. So yeah. You kill that with a riot girl. <laughs> I will um, shoot you AP mode. Okay, so having known that this Fanus stood up, so I mean it's in range. So this is fine, range, but the riot girl moving along here, easy kill. Yeah. So I think I think. The play that I called at the beginning of the turn, which was that um, use a combination of the missile launcher and the riot girl to use these just wide the fuck open face to face rolls. Anus has missed, um, and it's only been hit once. Uh, those are my dice. Uh, does it die or does it live? Cool, cool, cool. It goes down. Okay. Um, and again, it's not coming back up because there's no engineer, but you only have so many points, so fair enough. Um, yeah, I think the play of... Music, like, these, this table is wide open and has long lanes. Um, just doing some dodging on the Nahab. Yeah, fair enough. Um, the combination of the Riot Girl up this flank and the Lizard up this flank basically, basically covers the entirety of... Um, the Rama Task Force deployment zone. Is that really line of fire? Mm. There's a good chance this is a kill, actually. It's only on 11s, but the... Um, yeah, that's 26 inches. That's a neg 3 for the Red Fury. We'll see how this goes. Um, these engagements are just, like, devastating. And there's only so many places to hide. It's part of this, like, this is what I mean, this deployment zone. Both of these deployment zones are just... They're not quite great. 
All right, we've got a just the one hit. Uh, so one hit on a four. So there is a chance that the um, the Mukhtar wins this face to face roll. Twelve. I need what? Eleven. Yeah, uh, a six. A six gets through. Armor eight, right? Armor so the um. Armor eight, eleven. So thirteen minus eleven is two. Yeah, the three. very good chance that the tag is fine here. Yeah, totally is. Um, but this is what I mean. Like, see, see these. If if all that he had done this turn is put down this Mukhtar and shock out this Gulam, that actually wouldn't even have been the worst. And then pull back. That even wouldn't have been the best, the worst turn. But the fact that like Bran is sitting here doing kind of fuck all. That's how it, this is not useful. This is not immediately useful. This is not an immediately useful use of orders. This is something that could have been done at the end. Oh, there's a crit. Um, so this might be the end. So this engagement's happened again. Uh, he needs to save one of these to live. Uh, he needs... 15 will do it. So we got a wounded Mukhtar. The correct thing to do here is to go prone. Um, to not have this face-to-face -face roll again, even though it's going to spell the death of the... Um, the Ghoulam. Uh, Does he hold? Sure, no worries. No, he's yeah. going prone. Uh, these guys are not religious. He's going prone. Pretty sure he's on <laughs> No. All right. Is he going prone? He's thinking about it. I spend yeah, my he's gone prone. Order in group one, and I'm going to activate this guy uncamouflaged with the vaccine in hand. And he's going to okay, so rather than hit. follow up and kill the Ghulam, okay. or pull the lizard out. back, okay. uh, Kyle has elected to just again. move Brenda Castro. Sorry, there I'm is an irregular order left, order which he could convert with his last command token. No worries. Um, uh, just that last shot. I'll, I'll not do multiple dodges because I fucked it up. So. Ah, this is just a discovery. Yeah, uh, sorry, a, a dodge. By something, so. No, listen. This is, um, I, again, this is not... What is this doing that is useful? Uh, um, or, or what I could have done. Yeah, I've done it now. Um, yeah... Yeah. So this is this is the same this is the same problem with all of these orders on Bran. So while Bran was a camouflage marker, firstly his identity was concealed. So Kev did not have information that could serve him. Well, he knew there was a camouflage marker there. It couldn't necessarily be anything, but it could be a wide variety of zeros or Bran. By revealing it and spending all of these orders, then he has so accomplished order very little order. apart from opening I've up a box. By comparison, board. if he had I'll spent the turn putting I'll down the Fenus, putting down the Mukhtar, there, and then moving uh, the Riot Girl, again, like one order uh, to get there, really to get to that position, and putting Mussel shots into uh, these two units, you are in an extremely, extremely good position. If this team... The potential kills... I'm not sure he had fully enough orders to do this, right? So fair fair cop. But the potential kills from that line of play were the Fenus, all three Mukhtar, and the Gulai Missile Launcher. The game is functionally yeah, won, and there is no retreat in this scenario, uh, by the way. The game is functionally won, and there probably should be, to be perfectly frank. There is in supplies, and there are in other scenarios. Um, the game is functionally won with those kills made, because Kev's order pool is in shambles. Literally, he has Kamen, some Ghulam, the Nahab. To say functionally won is actually not fair, um, not least because Kev is a really good player, and he has surprised the fuck out of me with... Rama Task Force before, um, but yeah, the like this order pool is bigger than it needs to be, right? This is this um this was a turn. Ironically, for, for like the the aggressive action that Kyle took on the first turn, I think cost him, <laughs> and in this case, the the indecisive action, like the conservative action, I think, it cost him. Um, which is a, a terrible irony, because I think he's piloting the moment-to-moment -moment stuff really well. And frankly, the list is solid, and his instincts are solid enough that this is still uh, extremely, extremely open game for both players, but I think a slight lead for Bakunin. Um, especially the fact that only one casualty was sustained by Rama Task Force that turn, which means that they are on... They've lost all three... All three Fenus, and... One Ghulam, which means that they are uh, only sorry, down. I mean, really they are down talking, four, talking, which means that they should the have. Oh, okay, yeah. So, it's, yep, understood. I'll move What's back. He got here. He's got one, two, three. Not see the missile launcher, as you know. Uh, so, is that good now? This looks like too many uh, orders. Yeah, that seems. Yep, that's that's good. I'll, I'll keep marching if you like. Yep. Right. Um, you're 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 all good. Um, he's taken four, four casualties. Uh, he okay. should have eleven orders. Oh yeah, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think he's. I think he's got one too many orders here. Um, regular order. 
Ah, he's just got it flipped yes. as a yeah Can from from thing. Okay, that's cool. Yes. Yeah. So the the first combat group therefore consists of second combat group consists of the Tuareg and Carmen, and the first combat group consists of um the Nahab, three Mukhtar, which brings and then five Gulam. Yep, cool. Okay. Ah, all right. So oh, yeah. Kev is beginning yeah. by moving up the Tuareg. Yeah. This is pretty. This is pretty cool. How does have a command token left? Um, we will see what he does here. So the Tuareg is a hacker and a very good one at that. Um, Tuareg hacker has been revealed. Um, a whip fifteen. Um, now, Tuareg are Tuareg are an interesting troop because they are really, really expensive. Um, they are really expensive, and they are really expensive because they have nimbutism minus six and whip fifteen. Um, but the rest of their stats are light infantry stats. Um, they're they're. They're, they're ghoul arm. <laughs> Except for being whip 15. To, I'm definitely going to reset with my uh, oh, But they are whip 15, oh, which makes on. the Tuareg hacker, uh, if you can afford her cost, uh, an exceptional an exceptional hacker. Um, she would be like the the optimal, yes. right? She would be well, a, so a broken control, piece if she had a just a light shotgun rather than a rifle, because it'd be way cheaper. And if she had like hidden deployment so and mimetism minus three, yeah. you could optimize the profile. Oh, damn it. I didn't think but that. even setting aside that the profile could be optimized, this is a great capability. And there's a pretty good chance that it's going to do something nasty to this lizard, uh, which is going to make Kyle really regret not killing this Gula missile launcher. Kyle, if you watch this. I'm being overly critical here, I think. Uh, both players are playing well and making pretty good decisions in a tournament game, right? You don't do everything perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I have the luxury yeah. of watching from on high and critiquing both oh, players' decisions. Um, I wonder what he does here. Um, uh, more on it. So I think I I he goes... I think he goes for possession. Not 100% though, because Oblivion is I also an option. And... Because at least then you have to... Carbonite isn't. Oh, well, here's a cool idea. Probably. You you would go for Carbonite if this Riot Girl was not in the picture. Because then you would just run the Nahab gun and score the kill. Well, you dodge through the camouflage markers. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Potentially. On tens. Uh, and try and, try and geek the thing. But if you can't do that... I actually don't hate... I don't hate... a. Oblivion, and I don't hate total control. I so the reason why you might Oblivion in this case is that he doesn't have any orders left in the Tuareg's pool. Um, I don't have any orders left in the. He doesn't have any orders in the Tuareg's pool, so we can't do anything with it. Um, like for example, shoot this riot girl. Uh, and Kyle can just cancel it next turn, but doing so uses his last command token, which is relevant because then you can do it again. Um, so I need two dice on 15. So it's not... And the other benefit of total controlling is that you... Um, I failed to reset. Failed to reset. Okay, so he's gone for something other than total control. The other benefit of total control is that you allow this... Allow these um, four eggs to move forward. Now, he has gone for carbonite. Okay, cool. Um, the advantage of carbonite here... It's succeeded, by the way. The advantage of carbonite, firstly, is it potentially opens up the Nahab kill, but good luck getting through the Riot Guild. Still potentially, opt option, still potentially an option. But it gets these Mukhtar free. It also potentially allows the core link to activate and to pot two missiles into... You'd have to move the, the Gula missile launcher over to here. But while it is carbonated, you could put some missiles into this thing. Which I think is probably... Probably the play. He's got the orders. He's not ahead on scenario, but he's not behind. Like he's he's not far behind. Um, he can. This link probably consists of like these five right now. He's using the NCO order. I suspect he's just going to use that. So what we're going to do is. What's he going to do? I think I would just use it to move Yara to here. Ooh, it's pretty close. Okay, so you need to move things around. Yeah. Um, is this is this war core? Yeah, so inches is all the way to there, so that's not too bad. All right, so I am going to have to ask that NCO? question. I oh, yeah. wonder if what Kev has forgotten that war core exists. Oh, missile launcher! Oof! You're right, girl. Missile launcher rules. 
Yeah, I think you would mm. see me. So I, I kind of can't this is actually interrupt possible. any more than I already yeah. have here. Um, well. So he's spending, what he's doing here, he's spending the NCO order, which is not necessarily bad, but this missile launcher is definitely in line of fire of this war core. Now that's not necessarily a problem. Doctors can recover stunned from models with wounds. You might be comfortable getting letting this Gulan missile launcher get stunned just to reposition your link and then spend an order on the doctor. Because what you need is for the Gulan missile launcher or Yara to get eyes on this... Um, Lizard, and to do that, you need to kind of be either up here or out here. But your, uh, but your guy's not out that far, so I think this is actually probably a dumb idea. Mm. This is a tricky executional yeah, thing. I did the wrong thing. Um, but that's fine. You kind of want to just pause, take stock. Mm. When you're in this kind of a situation, as a bit of commentary, um, it it actually really helps to just say what out loud what it is that you what is your actual goal. Um, it doesn't even hurt to just mention it to your opponent. Like, it's not, it's not their job to help you in the sense, but it really doesn't hurt to say something like, all right, I want to, I want to shoot the um, lizard with the missile launcher. I think I need to be here. Yes, no, right? You can, it's totally okay to ask that kind of a question. Your opponent says, yeah, you can see the lizard from there. Or the opponent might say, I think you need to come to this first step. Cool, okay, we've established that. Um, I'll need to move there. What a, like ask? What AROs can I see? I can't see the right gun missile launcher. What else is there? Um, at that point, it's pretty reasonable for you to expect your opponent to say, "Ah, don't forget this war core." Okay, cool. Um, now, I would not be surprised if both players have forgotten. You can tell me if I'm standing in front of the lizard. I don't think so. The war core, uh, because of all of this focus on the lizard. I think um, but we will see. see. I am I am not sure this, if this, I should interrupt move? about this, this to be honest. Um because yeah, so it's like it's is, not it's um, not the end of the world either way. Like past past the line of the missile launcher. Mm, no, no, no. This guy's unconscious. Oh, there's a limit to how much I should um yeah. no, no, because this I should I should not, interfere in a game. Uh, uh, well, okay. we'll see what the players do. So right. let's give him a sec. Then Oh yeah, the war core. Okay, I may have gently reminded um, <laughs> the players that the war core is there. Um, uh, I don't think this is a huge deal. Um, I'm link well, yeah. I'll, I'll be flash pulsing this whole launcher. That's fine. That's fine. This, guy's gonna, gonna, this guy's going to stay prone, and he's just going to move only yep. two minutes. So there's a flash pulsing coming on the missile launcher, but again, not the end of the world because the doctor can cure it. And from how these things are moving, I kind of get the impression that it's Yara that he wants to take point. Okay, fuck it. We'll just um, do it. We'll just try it. So, oh, I'm there. Uh, this is some awkward movement. Um, so the, the Gula Mensa U is very, very, very good. Um, it's amazing for its cost, even with the SWC thing. I suspect that it's not in the right place. Um, the, being back here, right, means that it is really difficult for it to get anywhere. And it is often going to have, if you think about it, it is an NCO. It is often going to have to be the locus of, the kind of be the link leader if it wants to do anything. And if you're a spec firing, no big deal. Uh, and by the way, even if you just spec fire, that's something that Kev should have done last turn, by the way. There was no reason not to just randomly spec fire. It costs you nothing, and it might have scored a kill, say, on this transductor zond. Now, th at that distance, you probably needed to roll... Oh, hang on, what would it be the range? Okay, I've checked, <laughs> I've checked range bands. So it's, it would be neg 3, neg 3, neg 3 plus 3, neg 6. Um, so it would have been on 5s, uh, assuming that that's within... Like this thing, right? Assuming that's within 32, which it probably is, or it would have been on twos if it had been more than 32. But it was a free shot. <laughs> it was you. You can spec fire with your lieutenant order. So, like you know, go for it. Um, uh, oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> there's there's some back and forth here. Um, the Warcore has crit the Ghulam. The Ghulam has passed for some reason three uh, rolls. Oh no, that's right. Of course, it's a crit. Double eight. It's two saves on um, stun ammunition. Ah, there's a blast from the past. Um, passed all three of them. Everything is fine. Uh, it's guts prone. Nothing is bad. All is well. Um, but yeah, so the the after that missile that considerable back and forward, the Gula missile launcher can now become the link lead, link lead and do some things. Um, probably going to fight the war correspondent and hope not to be um, 
uh, stunned. She's actually not in an ideal position here. I'm not sure what's going on, but. Um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Who can you see? No, you're, you're dead. It's just some I'm fucking around. Okay. Up. Um. Yeah. So this, this, he's he's um, been fine look here. I don't know how many orders. Yeah, that, that was one order to get to there. Um. The. Things are technically moving. Oh wow. So I'm gonna pause for a moment here. This is part of the problem of playing five-person links on TTS. Um. You have to know exactly what you are doing. Uh. You, the audience, have missed this through the magic of editing, but Kev has um done and reversed like these these. These miniatures collectively have traversed about 50 inches of table space um, between all of them moving around. Uh, and blah. Um, ultimately, we see where they are. Uh, they've moved up to be behind here and over here. Cool. Well and well and good. Um, it all works. Yep, the missile launcher is fighting the war core, but Kyle has said, and I agree, I'm lost several times. Um, we've got a hit on a 10, uh, which beats the roll of a 4, so the war core is about to get splattered. Yeah, I'm sure he's dead. Yep, what dead. Um, is, just as a remember, you so, can use calling uh, to missile launchers to shoot. Mode, so he's dead. Uh, burst two, plus three to hit against a target that like can't fight back. Like for example, this riot girl engaging these Mukta. Do that. Do that stuff. It's a gun. You can use it. Um, anyway, so all of this is happening. We've had the move around here, the move back here. I'm not sure all of these orders have been correctly spent. Uh, actually, they look right because there was the lieutenant order spent, um, and now the engagement will go in on the. Um, uh, lizard. lizard. Cool. Lizard, lizard, now, sorry, what I was saying was, yeah, that was a, a small but very obvious uh, lost opportunity from Kev last round, which was it, he did not have any particular reason to spend his, um, uh, to activate his link, except he had an NC, um, NCO order, uh, and he may as well have spent it. Um, he was either going to be hitting on fives or on twos, but either way, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, and... Um, like why not, right? It's a it's a free shot. It's literally a free shot. The worst that can happen is nothing. Um, particularly if he's putting a like this is probably more than thirty two to be honest. So I imagine it's a crap shot. But like yeah, shoot the Morlock and the Transductor Zond. You might crit. <laughs> you just might go for it. Um, so after all of that puffing around, the Warcore is dead, and I think the missile launcher and Yara are moving up to engage the lizard. So right, that's, cool, cool, cool. So that's that, right? I forgot with the right girl. My bad. Uh, right girl. Oh no, it's fine. It's not until so I get past So you're good up point. till about here. Yeah. All right. No, that's. Uh, Here's an example of what I was talking about before. It's worth talking to your opponent. This, um, this link is beginning to move uh, forward, so and no, Kyle has just said, "Hey, there's actually, a." Sorry, Kevin sorry. has said, "Oh, there's a riot girl," and so Kyle has said, "Yeah, you're good up till about here." That is the kind of useful communication that makes games go faster. And when you're playing on TTS and it is difficult to move five-man links around, communicate with your opponent in a way that makes the game go faster. Because um, <laughs> it's. Uh, I have I have about an hour and sixteen of footage, but uh, I definitely began recording like two and a bit hours ago. <laughs> So, this face-to-face -face roll, missile launcher into the right girl. It has taken many minutes, but only a few orders to get to this place. Um, now, obviously, Kyle is hoping to reset, and he's hoping to roll. Kyle is hoping to roll a ten, to, or less, to reset and survive. Um, probably the two best situations for Kylo that just everything misses um, against the lizard, right? Because it's probably on 11s. Um, uh, or that he at worst takes only the one wound and can guts after recovering from um, immobilized. But tens are not easy to pass against. Uh, like again, in the same way that in the same way that five is not unlikely, um, you can't bank on rolling uh, a ten or less. Although I think there is a uh, so, you know, fifty percent chance, but we'll see. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be on elevens for the uh, elevens for the missile launcher. Twenty one point eight. So, um, there's a this this is an up in the air face to face roll. The only thing that Kev really should do, but which he hasn't, is move the missile launcher into and out of line of fire. It's all bad. Sorry, mate. Yeah, there's no way through that line. seven. Uh, oh, Alright, so it's gone It's gone the best it could possibly go for Kev, with two missile hits on the Lizard and a failed reset. So there are going to be, well, the best barring crits. Um, six saves incoming on the Lizard, he's presumably used armor piercing mode. Um, so, I mean, he's got a good chance of surviving a bunch of these, but this is a hard uh, hard face-to-face -face roll. And two wounds to the Lizard. Four for cover, is it? A couple of three. 
No, no, four for armor, three for cover. Um, so I'm pretty sure the six is a fail. Is Damage eight. goes to 11, goes yeah, to seven. Eight. Yeah, he needed eight. to roll okay, eight. eight. So, so two okay. wounds. So I, again? Yeah, sure. Reset. And this is... um. Don't think I just as a bit of a point, this is a really good demonstrator of why you might want to use Carmelite rather than uh, possession or total or oblivion. Um, this was this was risky, um, but again, if if Kev felt he was behind, then the correct thing to do was to take risks in order to get back ahead, um, and f it's paid off. Right? It's extremely likely that this lizard is about to die. Take two orders and a whole bunch of points with it, um, and leave Kyle in a in a weak ish position going into the final turn. Sweet, uh, and also leave this like it, what what this is also potentially establishing right. is, I mean, there's still some orders left to be spent after this as well. Like if 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 okay, all that happens so is that the lizard dies, Kyle's not in a bad again? spot. Yeah, sure. But much so more likely is that some other something. things will be accomplished. Yeah. Um, now the riot oh, goal right, remains a problem, but what what is sort of being done here is nope. that. Nope. Um, Kev is setting up a situation where he has a dominant ARO piece and Kyle is running out of or is out of tools with which to resolve it. And again, because this... Um, uh, it's what it says, but... Because this... Yeah, um, because this table is very, 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 very open with just one notable piece of... Um, yeah, so failed reset again. So the lizard is going to die. Um, lizard cannot survive more hits of these. So if he rolls a whole bunch of saves here and a whole bunch more saves, maybe things will go very well for him. But that's a dead lizard. It's destroyed. All right. Destroyed is... <laughs> destroyed is probably better than unconscious, at least in this state, but, you know. I don't bring engineer for something like yeah, okay. So what, what Kev has done now is he is increasingly setting up a position where just as Kyle has this very powerful missile launcher down with walking off these lines, Kev now is setting up a similar cordon to keep his two remaining HVTs safe. Um, in terms of paths and, and also keep a strong eye on this objective. In terms of options that Kyle has now... Um, the there are a few, into there. Oh, no, but and they are a little interesting. Actually, here's a good idea. Uh, now, Kev's got five order. orders left. Uh, I think he's probably going to use those to sub mask the Nahab and come and try and kill Brander Castro, which is a pretty easy so fight for the Nahab. Um, yeah, maybe sure. he'll move some stuff around. Um, I don't know. That's what I would probably do. Run over this way. With a slight caveat that you can cyber mask and then you can run past these, but then you have to dodge them eventually. Um, that's probably what I would do in Kev's situation: is I'd cyber mask the Nahab for a one, move, move through the right girl's line of fire. Yep. Oh, is probably possible. Potentially move, be discovered, dodge, and then hope. I don't love it, to be perfectly honest. There may be some better play, and Kev's got a good eye for this stuff. Um, he's got no command tokens left, which is a bit of a bit of a worry. It also would not be the worst to just move the. Frankly, actually, that's way over. No, original position. Take all that back. That Naha bollocks is massively overthinking it. There is a clear path forward for this team. Take this Mukta Red Fury. Move it forward, heal it, press its nose against this glass, fucking obliterate Brando Castro. Um, dead job's a good one, right? Like, that is that is more than sufficient for the remainder of this turn. It's a couple of all within five orders. You may even be able to, like, pull back to a position of safety or get up onto this rooftop, which everyone seems to have forgotten about. Um, that deletes this... Um, off the table, as in deletes Bran off the table. That leaves Kyle with perishingly few resources. One uh, Morlock, that's probably not going to ever do very much. Um, one camouflage marker back here. So I, that's definitely what I would do, is just is just press this Mokhtar's nose against the glass and a blurry Bran. Um, but it looks like he is going for the Nahab play. Don't blame you, Kev. That's the first thing I thought of as well. Um, let's actually say, yeah, so that... will not go off. That's Cyber Musk. Yep. Yeah, okay. So Kev, Kev is doing the flashy thing that I thought of, um, <laughs> rather than the like extremely fucking sensible thing that probably wins the game. But again, it took me a hot minute to actually think of it as well. So, uh, I suspect the Riot Girl will discover because by discovering she can let the mines go off. And if the if the Nahab gets got by the mines and it needs a ten to dodge, then you've stymied the last of these orders, and you can Alrighty, he can do discover something off. to recover. I suspect she's going to need like a sixteen. I failed to discover, but she does not get it. So that's very lucky for Kev. 
Let's see what else he does with it. He's got a few orders left. Order yeah. The um, the Nahab is a no wound cap troop. Brandicaster has a shotgun. I think the Nahab wants to just like, same deal as it's like it's not as effective as the Mukta, but push his nose up against this um, and just stare at the stare at Bran. And again, here we have the fucking problem with all of this stuff that he that Kyle did with Bran, rather than kill the opponent. Right? There there are times and places to play the mission, but Bran spent like four orders yeah, that's right. doing, Ugh. putting himself in this situation. And what has it accomplished? It's gotten him there. killed. It's um, gotten him killed to zero benefit. Um, uh, well, I guess that's what he's doing. He's going to go to there. Okay. Uh, I'm being hasty. It's uh, probably gonna, gotten him killed. I guess, does uh, he get an ARO? Because you're a because yeah. you're a nation? Yeah, you can, always, you can always dodge. All right, I'll dodge. You can always dodge. Well, you can dodge if you're not using stealth. So all I can yeah, I'll do dodge. Is... Oh. Um, yeah, so this yeah. this is really showing the like this this like oh, I need to do something. I'll do something with Bran rather than just be like I'm going to fucking kill my opponent. Um, yeah, and the the, the price that is being paid. Now the the one nice thing here is that because there are these two mines, fucking sweet by the way, using those those EM mines. Um, it is possible now. It would be better if they were shock mines, but still, in this particular case, in general, being EM mined is very nice. Um, EM mines are great equipment. You're just doing No, no, you don't get zone control. No, wait, hang on. The the um so I've got stale, so you don't get because of these mines, oh, it is yeah, possible oh, that yeah. Kev so will not want to on his last order reveal so this Nahab. There, and then, I uh, wouldn't blame him for not wanting to do it. Stale, um, staying yeah, staying in the impersonation state, like safe from the mines. Uh, we well, will see. All... Come on, matey. Nudge up to there. There are some hitbox so issues with the windows. There he goes. Yes, he's tapping up against the glass. Okay. Now, now, I can, now I can see you because I'm looking at you. The correct play I'm here sorry, is to I'm hold, yeah, not no, to sorry, dodge. Yeah, okay. and Probably. And the, the, specifically the reason why that might be the case is because there are those two mines there. Because you stealth the first shot skill, so I got no arrow. Ah, actually the correct play is to discover. Let me just back up just for a second. Okay. Kev has changed his mind and is going to back up to a millimeter against the window. <laughs> because on touching the glass, line of fire would be granted. There was no arrow previously because of stealth. So it would be a second short skill arrow, which would be a free discover. Um, yeah, he's just going to crawl forward. So I can't see you. Okay. And using stealth, so I get no arrow. Okay, right. And there is no one. Worries. And that was the last order. Okay, so he's just used the last order to crawl forward up to prone. Um, yeah, this this was probably a weaker play than going move, 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 heal, move, push against the window, obliterate Brandicastro, um, five dice on 16s. So that's okay, there were enough orders left. Now he's just moving to there. Fine. Air um, hey, revealing, cool. Okay, blah, 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 blah. EM mines go EM mine. No worries. I will uh, template merge you, and the two mines will go off. Awesome. So we'll just rule this. So uh, this uh, is an interesting uh, thing. Okay, so Bran is choosing to template mode the Nahab, who he yeah, knows has been his shooting submachine gun. I think the correct play was to hit mode, because it's a. Uh, do I have any armor? Yeah, armor one. So um, what's the damage? It's really happening to survive here. Um, it's a. It was a good face-to-face -face roll. Uh, he is unconscious. Uh, dead because of the shock. Oh, it's shock. Yeah, of course he's not yeah. shock immune. Nope. I mean, he got crit, so, you know, like... The reason why I would have been inclined to fire a hit mode is because you, um... Firstly, is you categorically cannot kill the Nahab with one template hit. Secondly, the Nahab is being hit by two EM mines. Um... So, isolated and mobilized. There we go. Um... Uh... Isolated, sorry. Um, not isolated and mobilized. You can immobilize Nahabs, but you have to use hacking to do it, because they are killer hackers. Um... So the reason why you would want to fire your shotgun um, hit mode is that it gives you the best chance to survive the face-to-face -face roll, right? Because you you are you are not surprised, so you would be um, one dice on fourteen or fifteen, depending on brands. I suspect brands' ballistic skill is eleven. So I've got um, seven regular orders, one regular order. So you you would be one dice on fifteens to those three dice on twelves. That's not the worst face to face roll in existence. Uh, one, two, three, um and you know those mines are going off six, anyway. Seven. Now, as it happened, you that, got crit, okay. can't count, phase. like it's just a thing that will happen sometimes. Uh, you know, um and sure he has use. probably come in this corner. Uh yeah. didn't even do a wound, so uh, much, much of a muchness. Um but uh, we got 18 on the uh, Nahab. So, um, that is the end of the turn. How are things standing for... Um, 
I would say yeah. this is probably what advantage Rama. Um, I think the Nahab would... oh, no, The order pool and, and remaining so firepower for the Bakunin list is limited. I um, think I'm clear the whole way through. The green. there is in terms of in terms yeah. of pieces that remaining that can engage and kill. Yeah. There is only then one gun left. I will be seeing there's a there's a, there's a combi rifle power. under this camouflage marker that I is mimetism, and there is this riot girl. I think I'm and I suspect Kyle yeah, is gun. not thinking about I this riot like girl as a potential aggressive pace, even though this was 100% a game for it. Um, I'll be on a 13. He. He might do something with it. Um, it would have been amazing if he'd done something with it last turn. Um, there is, yeah, just some moving, some dodging. Um, so this this uh, hmm. uh, Morlock can move up. Now this Morlock is... Okay, makes sense. Go for it. I'm not doing really doing in position yeah, to do a tremendous yeah, yeah, quantity, no, go for it, go but for it for can it. throw smoke. Um, Yara Haddad has... It looks like she can only see down to these cars and to protect the Naha, but she can protect the Naha. Um, so the Morlock could potentially throw smoke over to here. The thing is, is there's not, there's not a lot of orders left. Um, Kyle was so in a pretty good missile. position the if he could, um, really gut the remaining Rama order pool uh, and then use the last turn to just, just, to, just score a few more points. Um, instead the, um, the Rama is in a position where a doctor is holding a supply box and... Um, okay. Uh, in the absence of classif, even if even without classifieds, actually, at this point, Rama can be in it can be in a winning position. Um, the HVTs oh, are not easy uh, to obtain, but marker. like, yeah, this is the the fact up. that the Riot Girl has eyes on and all three. Two. Like, if this three, if this game stalls out and results in a Bakunin win, it will be because the Riot Girl has eyes on the routes to all three HVTs, so which is very really very relevant. Um, I don't believe you can walk okay, them. Okay, I'll have to walk around then. Yeah. So, 1.6. But I think we may uh, see a Rama win or a draw. With It's actually very possible that this I'll game results in a Rama win or a draw with no Bakunin HVTs inoculated. There. Because be careful. So um, they're holding one that's worth one point. So, so right now Kyle has two points so because he has inoculated a HVT. Uh, um, yeah, I'll do that. Rama presently uh, have one. Because they are holding a um, vaccination box. And then I'm going to Obviously, they need to not lose that. If they move up to this window and so into this building to grab this, no, this then they will be on two. Okay. So just this they can also, and on the way through, grab this one and be on three. Well. So if Kyle does not challenge the status quo, um, he is probably going to lose. Because all that so needs to happen is this um, Mukhtar right unit and runs to here and then runs to here uh, and they're done. Um, okay, no worries. I'm going to keep moving. I suspect just, Kyle will challenge um, the status quo because he's a good aggressive here. player. I don't think you can see but anymore. I don't know I what this uh, camouflage yes, marker is doing. Um, as a bit of a personal commentary, one of the things I've noticed about Kyle is that he's a little bit too in love with the um, play of moving camouflage markers through line of fire, move moving, and then re-camouflaging later. That's a really useful play sometimes, but uh, also, you should remember that you can shoot people and kill them, and if they if they are dead, they cannot discover you. Um, all right, so there's a bit of discovery happening here. Um, I'm not sure what's probably going on here. It's a zero hacker. I suspect he's attempting to accomplish a classified, which is not a bad choice. Um, if he does that, the next thing that he probably wants to do is. I, I don't think I don't think he can press any more. Um, HVTs. I don't think he can inoculate much more. I think if he succeeds no, no, in doing that, the rest of his no, turn yeah. is to find... So, uh, I'm gonna play a <sighs> it's probably to drop smoke there, I fail. I'm gonna do it again. run the Transdoctor Zond up to grab this box, and then run it away. And that's the entire rest of the turn. Three, pass. I get my classified. Yep, okay, so there's classified done. Mapping. So it's a uh, data scan. Oh, mapping. Right. Cool, okay. Now, so he has mapped this, uh, mapped this box. This game, but I can He's also contesting the secure the HVT. Uh, yeah, the How the fuck forward. does secure the HVT work in this scenario? Oh, I'll, it's right here, man. I'll, just, I'll pass to you. There it is, right there. Yeah, I always, I always, I always see that one. I like, always forget because I get mixed, mixed up with the under. It is extremely not clear. Oh, okay. you're, doing like a, you're doing a scenery piece. Ben, uh, yeah. who wrote this scenario, you should not have classifieds in it this. It just happens to be the HVT there as well. Uh, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, what do you 
whatever. That is fucking cooked. How do you... Do you... Cool. You can always... A ton. Uh, no scenario where you replace and then remove three HVT stuff. should include classified objectives that feature I'll HVT. <laughs> um, in Ben's shoes, yeah, I would probably change the one classified objective uh, to um, score a point if your component controls no vaccines yeah, at the end of the game. Anyway, different, different matter, but that's okay. It's, not... um, um, it's a custom scenario um, is and is all good. So Kyle at this point has so three orders. Yeah, so in his shoes, I would... Irregular order, so four orders if you had the more. Irregular order... Um, yeah, throw smoke, bit, like, uh, to uh, here, with the hopes of covering the transductor zone. Yep. It's pretty... So you may need two the, orders to do that, which is not ideal. The um, and then and you have to, the transductor zone run to grab this and run away. To, Frankly, not probably not enough orders to do it. But at minimum, you could make grabbing this challenging. He has one command token left. The other way to do it, and this is yeah, I think it's good. probably uh, too sketchy, is yeah, to just try and flash pulse. Right. Yeah, so, so I, I am really inclined to try and make this hard uh, to get. He's choosing to do it by putting up Actually, flash pulse I'll arrows, kind of overlooking the fact that Kev can uh, so win like by just picking up two objectives and securing... We're yeah. doing it classified. I she's targeted. I suppose he can't um, secure the HVT until this hacker is dead. Not much else I can do, really. I'm... So that's something. That is. Uh, I'll put the um, zero hacker in cam in back to camo. He's re camouflaging the zero. Um, he should probably lay a mine and then do that, that if he can't think done. of anything else. Yeah, he should. He should lay a mine and so um, there's there's an unspent order here, right? So what should be done about this unspent order? Bare minimum, clear the targeted state by trying to reset. If nothing else, um, right? That is a wasted, a wasted as fuck order. He should at least be trying to clear this targeted state, or have laid a mine. One of those two. Not doing either is wrong. Um, you have a resource. Oh, if you don't mind, because you had an order, you had a spear order later. Yeah, I think they just remember that. Okay, I'll put an order around this corner. I think you'll have enough orders for that. That's right with you. Yeah, so like move up this corner, place a mine, and then move back. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Okay. Both players have realized that Kyle has an order spent and can order to spend and can do something about it. The zero is going to place a mine here before we become a Sweet. Well and good. Over to Kev. Now, there are a number of possible plays that Kev can make. His order pool is not diminished, but this Nahab is isolated. Is isolated. Um, um, in Kev's shoes, I would play first one, just for the win. So, um, even with all of these orders. Definitely see you. Okay. Uh, Kev is finally just bringing forward Carmen Johns. She's going to hope for the dodge. This is... This is the right play. So specifically, it's the right play because he has zero command tokens left. She's already generated her irregular order for the turn. She's doing nothing where she was. She was locked in very effectively by the right goal missile launcher because the board is very open. Um, she could actually have really moved around here and then dismounted and come through the building. She never did. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think he converted her order basically every round. Uh, she is probably getting destroyed by the riot girl, but she might not. Um, I think she's throwing smoke, which is not going to be face to face, so this is going to be two dice on 19, so she's probably going to explode. Um, but hey, listen, you may as well. Nothing is gained anyway. by having, yeah, like, yeah, literally yeah, nothing yeah, is gained by having her stay back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you don't think, it, whether, if you think your plan does not involve using her. Um, in terms of Kev's actual plan, my inclination would be, yeah. I, so I think it's, um, it's this link moves forward. They move to claim this door, as in, like, take the door. Um, from here, one of them moves through this safe zone, right, because this is in the way. The doctor opens the objective. Probably along the way, the doctor passes off the existing vaccine pack to one of the other um, one of the other Mukta. I will just confirm. Um, yep, they follow the same rules as Beacon, so there's a pickup vaccine box skill. Yep, she's toasted. Um, goodbye, Carmen, but that's okay. Uh, once you've claimed this, you can then move very safely through this building, because muddy windows, um, and... Again, extremely safely pick up this um, vaccination box. At that point, you are on two objective points to Kyle's three. Um, you can score the third by... Well, you can score two more by attempting to... to um, 
bother. Actually, I don't know why I did that. I should have probably gone. Or spent so you are on three. So you are. On, if you get all three of them, you will be on three to Kyle's three. The game will be tied because you will literally just hold all three vaccine packs. Um, the play then to win is hand off a vaccine pack to the Nahab and have from this position here run around and vaccinate this contact and then die if you don't die you stay holding the objective and score oh really what for five points if you do die then you still score at least four and get the win Worth a point for every vaccine you hold. So. Oh, cool. Oh, I forgot about that. I should have gone and picked that vaccine. Like, oh. Okay, Kyle has also forgotten. I'm just listening to the players. Now, Kyle has also forgotten there are points. I couldn't have anyway. Forget it. Points for, for holding these things. So, okay. There, this is a little bit of, again, we, we're seeing again the... the the tyranny of custom missions, the tyranny of, um, <laughs> of not reading the scenario. Um, uh, it happens. Um, uh, yeah, in, in this scenario, which none of you will probably ever play, um, although I do believe Ben has entered it in the custom scenario mission, uh, custom scenario um, contest currently being run by Corvus Belly, uh, it's possible that um, this scenario will win and find its way into some kind of a thing that some of us will play. But otherwise, none of us will ever play it, uh, unless we play in an event that Ben hosts and, um, you know, has fun with it. Uh, it's not a bad scenario. I would actually kind of de-theme it a little bit, because, I mean, he wrote it as a as a COVID reference, and to be perfectly frank, I don't need a ton of reminding <laughs> that COVID exists. Um, it's probably meant to have a lightly positive, uh, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, we're this, look at this, we're vaccinating people, overcoming COVID, but to be perfectly frank, my country is failing to vaccinate people at the rate that it should right now. Um, that's that. We'll get there, we'll but uh, order. Um, it, yeah. Mm. Anyway, enough talking about COVID. Um, these videos don't make money, but if they did, they would get demonetized for that. Um, anyway, um, uh, blah, blah. I'll pr you're probably going to see a flag underneath this saying like, for information about blah blah blah, visit blah blah blah. Yeah. So the Muktars are moving forward. Um, this is this is potentially a game. So in this case, I, I think I think if I just remain, it's going to be a draw. If it's not a draw. It'll, I mean, it'll, if, if, and then arrows from there. the draw is in reach. Uh, so if this is a loss, uh, no, I don't think so. it's probably right, because, so uh, um, Kev punted uh, it, but I don't think he will. Kev's got a good eye for end of game play like this. Uh, speaking of, um, the doctor heals up the, um, the wounded doctor. Uh, ah, okay. New piece of information. Telemetry. Um, so, with this revelation uh, here, we know that um, there is a classified in play. All right, so um, that actually really clarifies, that clarifies exactly what the play is for Kev. So the play for Kev is exactly to, whatever, just just run past it, who gives a shit. Um, yeah, I'm just going to discover. Traffic, okay, all right. Kev, if you, if you watch this and get this far, this is a mistake. Just line up and then run the gauntlet. If this, if this thing reveals, shoot it. If it doesn't, Four, keep moving. You have feeling? you have two hack two two Another specialists order. in this unit. Uh, you're, you're not you're not struggling. Um, what the play for Kev should have been is to barrel forward this way. Just just demand this thing reveal itself. Like fuck it. it what's it gonna do? Reveal and shoot you? Sure, yep. kill it. Um, you it it really can't kill any of your other things. The absolute worst case scenario is that it shoots and crits your doctor, which is the play that Kyle should make is to just try and roll that, um, because the doctor is carrying a, a, a happy box, um, happy meal. But yeah, so it's just a barrel forward. Don't even make the discover roll. Let Kyle reveal so that you can shoot him. Um, crack this one open. Pull around here. Grab this. At that point, the Naha probably needs to come and take one because you want it to be holding one just so that it is holding one because the other Mukta will be holding things. I don't even really need to do that. But basically what you want to do is you want to grab this box and then... Ha, ah, he crits. That's hilarious. Um, uh, fucking go go zero hacker uh, and vaccinate this contact you know, and that's right, enough for a major win the, now as it happens uh this zero has just crit, crit the amukta so, was, so you were yes yeah, so you were minus three for range and i don't think he has oh yeah minus three for range minus three for six, mimetism because you yeah, mimetism oh, and you yes. were bad range out of cover oh. so it was 11 minus six is five so i crit <laughs> okay
Um, uh, doesn't matter. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a shame. That. that would have so been very climactic. Take, you, you, what, how many hits did you get home? Four? Uh, yeah, so this Mukhtar is about... So the zero... Yeah, so the zero did um, shoot the... Can he do it? Hacker from the looks of it, and then get probably yeah got obliterated. Um, oh, brr, dead. Um, All right. Um, so they Here's a minor point. Um, Kev is saying the doctor can't the um, crack yep. open the box. Ah, oh, okay. He's saying he can't get there in one order. So Kev has not done this, and indeed this this vaccination pack is still just hanging out back here. It should be with the doctor, but I don't blame them for not move moving aggressively. Yeah. So what? I think you'd Okay, so do you think you're just okay, right there? Okay, yeah, so right all right. So what Kev is doing here is he's he going for this contact. You just got to vaccinate the patient and you win the game. I would describe yeah. this as while you're doing it. bold. Because so I don't know if that's there. six inches. Uh, arrows. Now, um, you do have the luxury of checking a little bit. You can measure zone control of this at the conclusion of this at the conclusion of this short skill. Not the doctor? Um, the doctor, oh, he failed. Um, no, because the doctor can't pick it up twice because he's got... Um, oh, yeah, so Kev is just saying the doctor can't yeah, pick it up sense. twice. This is technically so true, but this matters in supplies okay. as well. Um, the pickup supplies slash pickup vaccine box skill works the following way. Um, you, the trooper should be in one of the, it's a short skill, trooper should be in one of the following situations. Um, either in contact with a model in null state with a vaccine box token, or in contact with an allied trooper in a normal state with a vaccine... Um, true, the, 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 the um, vaccine box token, or so just in contact with an unaccompanied the, token. You, by spending a short skill, you can pick up the supply box from the previous situation. You can pass supply boxes, right? The trooper who is picking it up makes the roll um, to 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 pick up the box. Uh, sorry, doesn't need to make a roll. Picks up the box, but the, you perform that action. So, for example. In this movement up towards this objective, the Mukta hacker could, as the second short skill of an order, use the pickup vaccine box skill to take the vaccine box from the doctor, letting the doctor be the one that moves up to the objective and makes the roll on two dice with plus three to crack open the box. I'm just going to confirm that there is a doctor and paramedic role in this. There is, doctor and paramedic bonus. Yep. Um, yeah, but it's so for the vaccinate civilian time, skill, not for the sorry, open the, box skill. Okay. Um, nevertheless, you, for reason, you do still want the doctor to be the one making this roll. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, so that's a plus six. You can't yeah, fail. So it might Interesting. Be worth a punt at least once. So I think anyway. the doctor will just, you know, go this way a bit and just kind of try not Yeah, to remember that. It, it's particularly yeah, useful yeah. if you are a so combined army player guys, playing supplies. Um, Dr. Okay. Worm is wonderful in that Worm. list because um, you oh, can Lord. have Dr. Worm and a Worm bot run forward okay. so to an objective in supplies, <laughs> crack it open, two dice, 17s, okay. um, and then you can use, you so can perform the pick up supplies skill to have the Worm pick the supplies up on top of the Worm, and the worm bot can run back to the deployment zone while Dr. Worm moves on to another objective. And because they are so fast, you can usually do all of that in a single turn. Um, I love doing that. It's super cool. Uh, anyway, um, none of that is actually happening. And uh, Kev is also not doing what I say. Uh, he is not going for the... So the, the reason why I am in favor of grabbing this box um, is that from here... There's an oh easy God. run, okay. like um, this, from this corner here, so I'm pretty comfortable with six inches to this ComTech. From this corner here, I am not comfortable with six inches to this ComTech. I don't think it's impossible, but it's yep. it's the really, the really close. Yep. Yeah, so he's doing his best. This is as close as you can get, and I don't think that's within six inches. So, actually, so there's, a, there's a chance that um, so this, this, could this is going to go badly, actually. We will have to see. Um, when he does do this, he should at minimum so fling one of the Mukhtar we'll off in this here. direction. Okay. Ooh, he only has one order left. Going to be the link team leader. Yes. Okay. So we we might we might be seeing. You can't see the missile launcher yet. Right. I've got no no arrows. A okay, tie. Short so the short the Mukhtar. It will depend. Try to dodge. Okay, okay. Uh, I see what's happening here. So, this is, there is an order that is still resolving, and the Mukhtar is attempting, yeah, because it's, it's too far. The Mukhtar is attempting a dodge. A dodge will let the Mukhtar get in range of the HVT. It's like an 11, I think, right? Fizz, 11. I think you auto win, because the box will be auto hit, I think. Well, let's see what goes on. Does Kev roll an 11? He does. Okay, so the Mukhtar is going to dodge two inches this direction, and that will get it inside range of the Comtac, and uh, because of the bonuses in this scenario, it is rolling two dice on 21s. 
you'll get it to attempt to, to um two dice on twenties to attempt to vaccinate yeah. the Comtech. Um, so it does. Um, we can watch it play out. Um, but that is going to mean uh, final scores are. Um, it's probably going to die because the right girl will blow it the fuck up. Um, I will blast mode the while he's there. Yep, going to get exploded. Um, which means yeah, that at the end uh, of the game, three, Kev will be holding three, four, one doing the thing. So a, yeah, box. We'll have done a yeah. done its telemetry, uh, and we'll have probably so we'll have vaccinated. Uh, um, let's see if he dies. The, the, the guy that you've hit me. So I'll be on flats. Um, yeah, Mukhtar explodes, wait, provided Carl doesn't sorry. miss two shots. Um, so eighteen. What's the missile launcher? Six. That it, it's flats. You had a cover. Mimitism three doesn't mount. So I'm on sixteen. Just watching the missile launcher hit now. So it's looking to be a four three win. Uh, ten and a one. Yeah. Okay. So the the Mukta doctor evaporates, but it does get to the Comtech. Um. A blah 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 blah. Put. Um. I, a bot. Actually, I'm not carrying the vaccine anymore. So that is um uh, so one two. One vaccine. You've done I one. Have, I don't have any vaccines. Uh, no vaccines. Because you because you because you killed oh, the, the guys. hacker. Never got it. The hacker kept failing. <sighs> twice, and I only had one. one okay, we might oh, actually have just seen a draw. Is it a tie then? So okay, so because, because <laughs> oh, you're right, it's still a tie. I didn't even need to do this. because so Kev never fun. came and picked this up. So um, by not oh by not goodness. opening this box, wow. um, fuck me, dead. Okay, all right. For all of the stuff that I just said, Kev never cracked this box, which means that he has done his classified and vaccinated one HVT. He is holding zero. Boxes because this this one over here actually is sitting down next to Ooh, this you doctor. Pick that. Oh, it's toughy. Well, the Nahab cannot grab this. Just didn't have any orders like, but I could have if I just tried again. If he'd opened this, this run over, <coughs> he could have done it. Because I'm not too specialist, so <sighs> it, it was pretty much that was the best. I was yeah. Get. Okay. So, yeah, um, the f there we go. The final score is a three. <coughs> So, a three-all draw, a um, which actually I think knocks both players out of the event, in, out of contention, because a, th a, th a three-all draw is a shitty, shitty result. I think it gives you one tournament point. Um, it is it is not particularly better than losing. It is better than losing, but not by much. Um, so that's a draw. Uh, well played to both players. Um, I have been uh, I have been extremely critical over the course of this game, as is you know my role as a commentator. Um, but to be fair, I think both players played well and and like in in um, well and in good spirits, um, good sportsmanship, good conversation. Uh, this has taken there's going to be a little bit less than two hours of footage um, out of. Uh, less than three hours of gameplay so this has been a quicker game than the previous one which actually i think speaks well to kev um moving moving around five person links inside tts is a pain in the bollocks um and he did struggle with it just a little bit but the game has come in nicely at less than three hours which really on tts you want to be aiming for about two and a half that's not too bad um all things considered so uh, well played to both players, an interesting game. I will see if I can commentate the third round, um, if people are interested in a, in a third Bakunin game, but it will be with this exact same list, um, because I, as far as I can tell, because Kyle, I'm pretty sure, is just playing it into everything to learn it. And fair cop, I really like this Bakunin list. Um, it's got a lot of everything, a lot of moving parts, it fits a main battle tag. Um, no engineer, but... This was an example, by the way, of why you don't need an engineer um, mm. to support a main battle tag. What It would never have an opportunity yeah, to do so anything. The main battle tag got killed in a turn, and it did all of its work in that time. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, well played to both players. Uh, yeah, all of that stuff, you know, leave like, comment, subscribe, that crap. Um, if you want, it's fine. I don't make money from this, I do it because it's fun. So, um, well played to both players. Uh, I suspect that there are more points of Rama left alive than there are of Bakunin, because that Mukta Haris is partially alive. There's not a lot left in the Bakunin list. Um, there are no zeros. There is really just the core link. Yeah, so I reckon Rama. Rama definitely has more VPs left alive, but on objective points, that's a draw. Um, so the three, yeah, well played both players. Points, that concludes this battle report.